A steam plant using Cotswold Heritage Components Part 2. Cleaning the inside of the Cotswold Heritage Boiler using Kilrock K Descaler, which is formic acid. Plus removing the boiler base and ceramic burner. I use this Kilrock K Kettle Descaler in my acid bath. This Kilrock K is formic acid and it's not very strong. In fact the remains of last year's trick-or-treaters are still visible in my acid bath. Potentially this stuff could be dangerous if you don't use it properly and read the instructions. Time for a health and safety warning. The Kettle D scaler that I'm about to show contains formic acid and if used incorrectly can be dangerous and become a serious hazard to your health. Read the instructions on the reverse of the bottle before use. I'm part filling a syringe which has a piece of silicone rubber tubing attached to it Descaling this boiler is more or less the same as descaling the Willesco D20 steam engine boiler. But it's simpler as the boiler is a smaller unit and much easier to move around. Here I'm putting some Kilrock K into the boiler using the syringe. Once I'd done that I refitted the cap to the bottle and put it back in the cupboard. A quick note about using acid. Normally you would add the acid to the water, particularly if it's sulfuric acid. You've just seen me put the acid in first, but this is formic acid and it isn't as concentrated as sulfuric. With the Kilrock K inside the boiler, I put the boiler in the sink. The really good thing about my second workshop is it's next to the kitchen. I have access to boiling water, hot water or cold water. In my main workshop, I have to fill plastic containers with water. The next part of the job is fairly tedious. I don't do anything. I'm just sat looking at the boiler in the kitchen sink. You can see the odd bubble going up the water gauge. I went into the workshop next to the kitchen and ran the steam engine for a while. This is the Cotswold Heritage Griffin that's running. I also have a Cotswold Heritage Cirrus beam engine. And I'm thinking about making a special steam plant that will allow me to run one or both of these Cotswold Heritage models. The real problem for me with these steam plants that I build is they're too big. In fact, the partially dismantled steam plant that was sent to me from one of my customers in the USA is about the size of a small town. Well, maybe not that big, but it is big. The question being, once you finish playing with it, where do you put it? I've figured out that if I use this baseboard with the hand pump but do not fit the gas tank, which is a waste of time anyway, then I can put a condenser in its place and make the steam plant as it should be in two parts, the boiler room and the engine room. In this clip I'm removing the boiler barrel from the base. And once again underneath the boiler, the bit you can't normally see, the serial number has been engraved. This is the view from the underside of the boiler. You don't normally see this because it sits on the burner and here's the burner connected to the gas tank. I thought I'd just mention that you can't fill this type of gas tank with a normal butane aerosol type can. The nozzle isn't long enough. You need to buy one of these, which is a long extension that fits on a commercial gas canister. This is not butane, it's a butane propane mix. The problem is, you never want to fill gas tanks indoors. Here, I'm showing me filling a gas tank and it's sat on a Land Rover tyre, which was one of a set of four that were outside my old workshop at the other house. I would fill the tank outside and then fit the tank into the boat. You certainly do not want to fill one of these tanks when it's in a boat. The gas being heavier than air sits in the bottom of the boat and you only realise your mistake when you light the burner and the gas in the bottom of the boat explodes. This is the ceramic burner which is fitted into the base of the Cotswold Heritage boiler and the good news this is the correct type of ceramic the other stuff that's actually flat with holes in it does cremate very easily, but this type, which is knobbly, seems to work much better. This piece of ceramic is held to the burner very gently, using one bolt in the middle. As I removed the piece of ceramic, I could see some rust around the outside of it, and I could also see some traces of rust inside the burner itself, then I realised what the problem was. There's no sign of any kind of an exhaust condenser, so I assume that the exhaust pipe from the steam engine went straight up the chimney. Some of it would have condensed into water and run down the tubes, onto the ceramic burner and into the casing of the burner, 
and that, I think, explains where the rust is coming from. In the centre of the burner is a threaded bush which holds the ceramic in place, but then there's also this bit, which is a diffuser, to slow down the speed of the gas. The incoming jet of gas hits this diffuser and bounces around, making the burn more even. The burner's held to the base plate with this clamp which I've just removed, and here's a nice touch, two pieces of string, to stop it rattling about or resonating. That's a simple yet clever idea. Ceramic burners do suffer a little bit with howling. This generates a resonant frequency, which isn't helped by the fire tubes in the chimney. Howling is a particularly bad phenomenon with boilers of the single centiflue type, either horizontal or vertical. I'll see how this one performs when I finally get it back together, fill the boiler with water and light the burner. That is it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.